Oh, it's you. What do you want? To ask you how you died. Oh, it was dreadful. It happened right in here. I died in this very bathroom. I remember it so well. I did it in here because Olive Hornby was teasing me about my glasses. I hid in a cubicle and started crying. Then I heard a boy come in. He said something funny, a different language. Anyway, I unlocked the door to tell him and go and use his own bathroom. And then I died. How? No idea. I just remember seeing a pair of great big eyes. And my whole body seized up and I was floating away. Where did you see the eyes? By the sinks. Look! The taps are turning into snakes! Try saying something in parcel tongue. Okay, I'll try. Open! Come, come to me. I'll go first. Well, it looks like you boys don't need me, so I'll be off. We'll be right behind you, Harry. Won't we, Professor? Oh dear. Lost it? Moi? No, 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 no. Not the great Gilderoy Lockhart. It's just that now is the time to end this little adventure. See? I shall go back to the school, tell them it was too late to save the girl, and that you both tragically lost your minds at the sight of her dead body. Oh, no. I know what he's going to do. He's going to try and hit us with one of his memory charms. Yes, indeed. The famous Lockhart memory charm. I'm sorry, boys, but it is for the best.
Are you okay? Ron! Yes, I'm through here. I'm fine. Lockhart isn't, though. He got blasted by his own memory charm. What are we going to do now? Well, we can't get through this lot. It'll take ages. There's only one thing to do. You wait here and I'll go on. Ginny's been down here for hours, and if we waste any more time, it might be too late. OK, Harry. I'll start trying to shift some of this rock so you can get back through. Wingardium Leviosa! Wingardium Leviosa! Incendio! Wingardium Leviosa!
Ginny! Ginny! Don't be dead! Please wake up! She's alive, but only just. Ginny's been writing in the diary for months, pouring out her soul. And as she did, I grew stronger, until I had enough power to start pouring a little of my soul back into her. Ginny Weasley opened the Chamber of Secrets. She daubed threatening messages on the walls and set the serpent of Slytherin on the Mudbloods and Filch's cat. I'm afraid Ginny told me all about you, Harry. So I decided to show you my famous capture of that great oaf, Hagrid, to gain your trust. One day, I hoped to lead another in my footsteps to finish the work of Salazar Slytherin. I knew you were on the trail of Slytherin's heir, so I led Ginny down here to wait. Tom Riddle was my filthy, non-magical father's name. Do you see it yet, Harry? I am Lord Voldemort, and now, Harry, I am going to teach you a little lesson. Speak to me, Slytherin, greatest of the Hogwarts Four! Your sword. Maybe I can redirect the battleless venom. Uh, Ow! This venom hurts.
There was silence. Silence except for the steady drip, drip of ink still oozing from the diary. The basilisk venom had burned a sizzling hole right through it. Shaking all over, Harry pulled himself up. His head was spinning as though he'd travelled miles by flu powder. Ginny drew a great shuddering gasp. It was me! Harry, but I swear I didn't mean to. Riddle made me... he took me over. Harry told her that it was all right, that Riddle and the Basilisk were finished. Come on, Ginny, let's get out of here. They were flying upwards, and before he'd stopped enjoying the ride, it was over. All three of them were hitting the wet floor of Moaning Myrtle's bathroom. Harry told them everything. He told them about hearing the disembodied voice, how Hermione had finally realized that he was hearing a basilisk in the pipes, how Aragog had told him where the last victim of the basilisk had died, how he had guessed that Moaning Myrtle had been the victim and that the entrance to the basilisk's lair, the Chamber of Secrets, might be in her bathroom. Professor Dumbledore explained that 50 years ago, Lord Voldemort, as a 16-year-old Tom Riddle, had enchanted his diary, and that diary had enchanted Ginny. Later, Harry managed to release Dobby from the slavery of Lucius Malfoy, for it was Lucius Malfoy who had planted Tom Riddle's diary on the hapless Ginny Weasley. And as for Harry, well, once again, he truly was the boy who lived.